Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a weekly landscape tour that I'm gonna be doing this spring as this uh, landscape here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Zone 7B uh, continues to transform. This has been about, uh, this is about a two year project at this point, um, re-landscaping this, 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 this landscape in Raleigh. Still a lot of things on my, I told everybody I was going to do list. Uh, I'm trying to knock as many of those things out this spring as possible. Right in the middle of this, uh, we had a 23 degree night the other night with 30 mile an hour winds. I'm sure many of you watching this had something similar happen. And so I had to come out here and cover a few things that are barely hardy or even not hardy uh, in, my, in my area because they had started to wake up or leaf out. I also covered my pansies. I've never covered pansies before, but my pansies had been so stunted through the winter, I did not want them to take another setback. Uh, so just a little light shade cover over top of them, you know, add five degrees, kept the wind from blowing on them, and they look pretty good. They're finally, hopefully, gonna fill in here pretty quick. My hyacinths, this, this group of whites, despite being covered, um, did take a little bit of damage, as you can see. You know, that's unfortunate, uh, but you know, that, that, that's life, I think. It was more the wind on those than it was the uh, temperature. All of the tulips are fine. They're fantastic, as long as their flowers weren't open. My daffodils that had open flowers on them, the flowers definitely got damaged. And I think, again, it was that combination of wind uh, and temperature. All the deciduous plants that had leafed out in this landscape definitely took a giant setback. Uh, this hydrangea paniculata had started to leaf out. You can see the damage on the uh, leaves on it. My, uh, all the butterfly bushes had started to uh, leaf out. Um, all of those, you know, you can see the, the you know, this, this is all toasty. I've gotten a lot of questions about that in the last week. None of that is any big deal. I, I didn't bother covering my deciduous plants because it's not untypical. It's not atypical or untypical. Is it untypical? Unty untypical? <laughs> atypical? Is it untypical or atypical? <laughs> That's a funny thing right there. Okay, so that'll be, that'll be a funny thing in the video. It's not unusual uh, for deciduous plants to leaf out like that um, and, and be burnt back. And uh, again, this hydrangea paniculata blooms on new wood, so it's no big deal. Hydrangea macrophyllas, they bloom on old wood. They could potentially have taken a hit, and I did cover mine in the back garden. Not sure if I um, was successful for that, probably for another week or two. This is another hyacinth that was covered with little one gallon containers. These weren't as far along, um, but even those still took a little bit of damage on the open flowers, but you can see there are lots of buds still to come and open on those. I really, I really, really like that color, uh, but even with a little bit of protection, uh, 23 was a bit too much for open flowers. This is a crinum lily uh, behind it, and you can see how it had jumped ahead and uh, got toasted back pretty good. And even the, this foliage is kind of liquefied a bit. Um, it's gonna have to, uh, to regrow. But you know, that's, that's an unfortunate thing when you get 85 degrees and then you know, a week later you go down to uh, 23. One of my species tulips here is uh, starting to bloom. Uh, it'll be wide open in the middle of the afternoon, but this one's uh, Baker's Lilac. Uh, I've got lots and lots of species tulips. These, these are more likely to come back uh, year to year in my area. And uh, I love the foliage on these. Uh, you know, I love how the foliage kind of goes back and then the flower, it allows the flower to just kind of show off. I have a few containers that have conifers in them. These weren't protected through the entire winter. I brought them up here to the top step of the porch just because it has a cover on top of it uh, for the uh, worst of the weather. There are pansies uh, in the one with the Boulevard Cypress in the back and this Euonymus, uh, but these are violas down below in the other two containers. This is a little cryptomeria, a little dwarf cryptomeria. It's been in that container now for over a year. It can stay in there for, for years and years. And this is a Camiociferus lawsoniana in the middle of this one, just completely unfazed uh, by winter in a container outside, again, with the violas around it. Boulevard Cypress up there, same thing. Um, but these, these look great through the winter, these little dwarf cypress and these containers with violas. There's a dutzia that had started to uh, leaf out uh, here on the front foundation and it, right here, and it was just completely unfazed. I did have a light cover over this whole bed and that, you know, five degrees probably under that cover is what saved the foliage foliage on it. It is super cold hardy as well. So it had some kind of built-in, a little bit of built-in protection. A uh, few of the uh, tulips are thinking about showing some color this week. The buds are um, in the center of them. I think by the time we're showing this off next week, it should be um, 
should be a lot of color on the uh, on the tulips. Again, pansies, you know, all look a little bit better than last week, despite a 23 degree night. I think they should explode here in the next week, week and a half. Lots more daffodils, lots more hyacinths, lots more alliums. Um, got a lot of giant alliums that'll end up blooming, you know, in that two to three foot height range. Uh, a couple of other deciduous plants that are just completely unfazed, you know, the spireas that has started leafing out uh, right here. They're just completely unfazed by a 23 degree wind blowing over them. They were not protected uh, in any way. And then I've got a, a lilac that I'll uh, walk over to now and uh, show you same thing. You know, this Miss Kim lilac, <laughs> despite being despite being on its way to leafing out, I can't tell that this event even happened on all this new foliage on this uh, on this lilac. It's amazing, something that's like zone four cold hardy, a 23 degree night, a late frost or late freeze, a, a late deep freeze for us, unfazed and flower buds are already forming on it. The plant that I was most concerned about in the landscape uh, was this Rosalinda Indian Hawthorn and it seems to have escaped. It just had a light uh, sheet over the top of it. Um, it, it's a big gangly thing, very, very hard to uh, cover this one. But as far as I can tell, these buds have survived. I can't wait to show this thing off in a week or two. Uh, it's big, beautiful pink clusters of fragrant flowers on this variety. Right. The back garden space is definitely more protected. There are some screening plants back here, there are houses, there's an oak over my head. Definitely the wind did not blow through here you know, like it did in that front garden space. Uh, and so therefore, you know, the hyacinths that are back here that were the same white variety that was in the front garden space uh, covered the exact same way. Uh, these are fine and the ones in the front are not. My hydrangea macrophylla, which I just mentioned um, out in the front garden space, uh, the new foliage did get knocked back. I don't know if it's hurt the actual, if the flower buds had started to emerge from that. Uh, luckily, this is Deer Dolores. This is a remontant variety, meaning it blooms on old and new wood. So uh, this one will reset flower buds. Uh, you know, that <laughs> these kind of late freeze events like that uh, really increases the value of uh, remontant uh, hydrangea macrophyllus. This is a Pittosporum I got from a rare plant sale a couple years ago at the J.C. Ralston Arboretum, and it had the flowers were just opening on it. This was the first year I was really going to see what this thing this thing looked like in the landscape and uh, uh, every single flower um, got nuked on it, probably more than any other plant uh, in the landscape. Although my Pieris, one of the most cold hardy evergreen shrubs back here, last week you guys saw this thing in full flower and even with a cover on it, you can see this is the problem with open flowers. Um, you know, open anything below 25 degrees uh, typically on any open flower is going to be damaged, whereas the plant is hardy much, much colder than that. And, you know, the newest growth on it, typical for uh, Pieris to have new growth too early, it gets, gets damaged like that. That's like a free pruning. But I definitely did not want to lose, you know, the flowers. I had definitely, I had a few more weeks of, of good looking flowers on this, but nothing I can do about it at 22, 23 degrees. So here's another example of the hyacinths in the back garden space with a little bit of the wind blocked uh, versus the front garden. You know, these, these are still looking, these are still looking great. There's several groups of these, these yellows. Uh, this wide gelo, which is actually in holding, <laughs> it's, it's in the ground right there because it had to be moved um, from one spot. It's actually heading to its uh, final home pretty soon. I'll show that in a uh, video, maybe a transplanting video. Uh, it did get a little crispy uh, on the edges on the edges of the new growth, uh, you know, that, that, that's life. This stellar ruby magnolia, this one's kind of interesting. This one's one that's, you know, uh, could definitely be damaged in a really cold uh, winter. Uh, it wasn't damaged at all the other night, nor was it protected. And I talked about that in my uh, protection, protecting plants video last week is none of the evergreen shrubs in the landscape had really started to put on any new growth like the deciduous ones did or the super early flowering things like the Pieris or or you know the bulbs you know those kinds of things this thing is still is smart enough to still be sitting here dormant so therefore it didn't take any damage we're mid-march now and i have until mid-april for my typical average last frost so at some point this thing will start to put on some new growth and i would have to think about uh protecting it you know if that were going to happen but again um when i was protecting and deciding what to protect i was just looking for new growth um, otherwise it's completely dormant one of my variegated Daphne 
Uh, I did not protect it. I didn't want to put anything on top of it because, you know, this thing is, you know, I figured I'd end up doing more damage to it. This is a great example of cold doing lots of damage on the oldest open flowers. Uh, you know, they're, they're browned out down here at the bottom, but the flower buds that are up here at the top that are still forming, you know, there's no damage whatsoever. These are going to continue to open. But again, look, look, looking back here, you know, that's the difference between the cold hardiness of an open flower versus the cold hardiness of a closed flower bud like that. You know, a couple more degrees, I imagine these would have gotten damaged as well, but it's just kind of an interesting thing to uh, look at uh, in the uh, new, new foliage getting stunted you know, a bit on it right there. It'll just, it'll just relief out. Not really worried about it. Not worried about any part of it. It's just interesting to me to see the, the cold hardiness of buds versus open flowers. So thank you guys for following along with these uh, weekly garden tours. Uh, hopefully they'll be more interesting than discovering what was damaged or not damaged from uh, freezing uh, as things start to wake up and new things are going in. Uh, lots of plans this spring. Thanks for watching.